regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, March 11th, 2019. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, can we have the prayer? We do have Reverend Wade in. Let us bow our heads. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. To set thy glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and sucklings as thy ordained strength. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from a stormy blast and our eternal home. We thank you for the privilege of prayer and the results of prayer as we come tonight with this council. We pray for your divine guidance, direction. We pray for our mayor, all the officers, all the districts, all the uh, those who are sharing in our city, the residents. Continue to bless our city. We thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing, what you're going to do. And then join us in heart, mind, and purpose. And if we share tonight, we let your Holy Spirit reign supreme based upon your will, your word, and way. Give wisdom, revelation, knowledge in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. <coughs> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Present. 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 Madam Clerk, for the record, Councilwoman uh, Maldonado is dealing with a, a family issue. I have a motion to accept the minutes for the regular scheduled meeting on February 25th, 2019. So, so moved. Second. 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 Motion was made by Councilman Perez, seconded by Councilman Monroe. Have any questions on the motion? <clears throat> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Councilman Orange. Mr. President, I would like to make an amendment to the agenda and add um, resolution number 190004. I didn't get a chance to get it in in time because uh, the clerk from Michigan City sent it to me uh, on Friday evening. So I would like to add Second, Mr. President. So moved. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilman <coughs> Garcia to add resolution 19-0004 to the agenda. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, roll call. Walker? Yes. Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. 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 Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francis? Yes. Madam Clerk, do we have any communications from the mayor? Any communications from department heads? Yes. Accounts payable warrant 031119CC and accounts payable warrant 031119CC. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Medina, seconded by Councilwoman Walker to accept accounts payable warrants as read. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? No. Orange? Yes. Medina? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Payroll warrant by weekly 022219 and payroll warrant monthly 030119. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia. Seconded by Councilman Monroe to accept 
payroll warrant biweekly 022219. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Yes. Red? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francisco? Yes. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Monroe, to accept payroll warrant monthly 030119. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Medina? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Do we have any committee reports? Moving on to board reports. Do we have any board reports? Madam Clerk, is there any ordinances on first reading? Yes. Ordinance 19-0001. Section 156.077 special use by adding section 25 tank bonds. So move, so move, Mr. President. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Monroe, to hear ordinance 19 0001 on, was that first reading or second reading, Councilman? First and second reading. On second reading, any questions on the motion? Councilman Garcia? Yes, I think Mr. Morris Rowe is here to, <coughs> to talk about it. Mr. Morris Rowe. Morris Rowe, Assistant City Planner and yeah. Assistant City Attorney as well. Mr. Morris Rowe, um, with this before us, is there a plan to add more tank farms to the city? Well, the uh, that's why it's the ordinance is here giving that if someone wants to put in more tank farms, that they have to not only come to the BZA, but they have to come to the Common Council. And there are some 24 uses already that have that requirement. This would add the 25th. Now, I would like to distinguish between those tank farms that, have, that are already in existence and have additional space, such as Sitco and uh, mobile and a number of others, BP, those will also be expected to come before the council with this ordinance. However, I think the intention, at least, of, of Mr. Allegretti and the mayor is that, that those would be, if they have room within their tank farm, be looked on more benignly. However, new tank farm locations should be strictly uh, looked at before they would be approved. Yeah, on the review, um, would the fire department be included in that too? Fire department is always included. The, the, the technical review that goes on before a BZA hearing or before a plan commission involves the firefighters uh, inspection division and as well as building, health, and, uh, and planning. No further questions. Councilman Perez. Mr. Morris Rowe, um, right now as it stands, you said there were 24 items and this would be the 25th item, That's right. That's right. The, the ordinance, this is part of the planning and land usage, and 156.077 has these uses. For instance, they start public building, extraction of raw materials, hospitals, a recreation fields, a heliport. There are a number of items that have been added uh, through the years, and this is an additional one. Were tank farms at some at some point in the ordinance and then removed? No, I don't think because so. I think I think we have our industrial zoning M two, which is heavy industry, has been super broad. It allows almost anything. So when it came to uh, looking at at, uh, I'm trying to think of the word of. Uh, 
slag. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the steel companies in town was looking at putting up a 10-story slag heap uh, along Dickey Road, and that was, I think, the 24th addition to this ordinance, was that that would have to be considered by the council whether or not that made sense. Planning Department didn't think it made sense to add that special use requirement meant that they would have to come before and explain it and try to get council approval as well as any approval by the Planning Commission or the Board of Zoning Appeals. In the final process, they would still have to go through the regular BZA process and then ultimately get final approval here at the council Correct. for any new tank farms. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilman Medina? Mr. Marshall, this this is specific to uh, <clears throat> tanks to store crude oil and petroleum products. Yes. Do we, do we have any other uh, legislation prohibiting other products other than what's listed here? I I don't know. I think the the intention of this was to let me We're looking here at oil depot, oil terminals. If another kind would come up and we felt it was similar and arguably would require this, we would also make it. I mean, in other words, the intention of this was not to limit and provide uh, open doors for other kinds of uh, storage facilities. But I think we were looking specifically in this at, as it's mentioned here, oil depot, oil terminals. Well, I'd like, I'd like to see something uh, in the future, perhaps, regulating uh, other uses. In we would look at those, and if you could bring those to our attention, we would certainly consider them. Uh, you know, we're only limiting crude oil and petroleum products. What if they wanted to store uh, antifreeze? Well, we would we would look at that, and okay. we would we would argue that that it would be included. Uh, Is that considered? petroleum product? I mean, is that defined somewhere in the statute? Frankly, I would have to research that. I mean, perhaps <laughs> something we could if, do in If I could do that before before third reading. I, I, I believe it's first reading tonight. Second. 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 First, second. second. first day and second? Mm. Yes. Okay. But before third reading, I could I would try to research that. Thank you. Any other questions? You, you would be able to amend, would you not, if we wanted to add another uh, Yes, before clause. third and final, I believe so. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moore. And thank you. Madam Clerk, roll call to adopt Ordinance 19-0001 <coughs> on second reading. Walter? Yes. Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orr? Yes. Tina? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances on second reading? <coughs> there are no, no ordinances on second or third reading. Do we have any resolutions? Yes. Resolution 19-0003, sponsors, council members, Maldonado, Orange, Garcia, Medina, and Monroe. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of East Chicago, Indiana, calling upon the Canadian National Railway to use Smart Start Idle minimization technology on all of its diesel locomotives operating in the rail yard located west of East, Ch East Chicago Central High School. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Medina. Any discussion on this motion? Yes. Councilman Garcia. Attorney Buscemi. Yes. <clears throat> um, I just uh, like to ask, what would be the uh, to follow up on this if they don't follow this? Well, you've specific, if you pass this, mm -hmm. you've specifically stated a policy position and a, and a specific request on the part of the council, specifically to the Canadian National Railway. You've also asked that the officials in Montreal, who are the officials that run the railway, respond specifically to the council through Council President Franceschi. So we'll know whether they're going to agree and use idle minimization in that rail yard area or not. 
and uh, if they don't, the council, as the council members know, is somewhat limited under Indiana law in regulating what the railways do. You saw that recent Indiana State Supreme Court decision, unfortunately, about two months ago that ruled that our 10-minute crossing block <coughs> law, the state law on prohibiting uh, blockages of more than 10 minutes was ruled unconstitutional uh, by the Indiana State Supreme Court. And that was based upon the fact that there is pretty much exclusive jurisdiction over regulation of railways and their operations with the federal government and not with the state government. If, if they don't comply and don't install and confirm to you that they're going to install idle minimization to help keep the air cleaner, we'll have to research what We'll research what options we still have at the city level and at the state level, and then another option would be simultaneously if there's a refusal to uh, perhaps engage the federal legislators to contact the railway on our behalf. Too. So there's no enforcement, really? No, we can't force them to do it because we, you're, you notice we're, uh, I think the wording is calls upon. Yes. The council calls upon CM Railway to use the Spartan start idle minimization technology. We can't force them to because we don't have jurisdiction. Yeah. Maybe we need to follow up with this uh, resolution um, stating that uh, we got the high school there because they idle behind the football field and the track field there. Well, maybe we should follow up with uh, why we want this pass. Uh, we got residential um, um, houses there, plenty of families there, um, and the high school there. So and then you got across the street, you got the preschool. So maybe we should follow up with a letter stating why we asking for this. Mr. Marshall? I, I believe you also, Richard Morris, for again, I believe you also should have CSX, the Chessie system. Uh, it's, it, the main line is those rails at, at least include the Chessie system because they're coming off the main line, the east-west uh, Chesapeake and Ohio CSX system. So I, th I think uh, to be complete, you want, you want in your research and in, include at least in the alternative that in addition to Canadian National that you have the CSX system as Do well. They use those same tracks. There? Yeah, right. they could they come off the they come off that main that line. Brought to our attention was Canadian National, but if the council wishes to do so, assuming we're going to approve this, we could prepare the identical resolution <coughs> for include both. I would say CSX. Or, or tonight by uh, motion, if the council wishes to act, act on it, uh, you could amend it to include the same request to be submitted to CSX, and then I can work with the clerk's office if, if that's passed and give you the mandatory language. Yeah, I think we can pass it tonight, and then you could uh, fix it the way sure. you need that to be read. Time getting it out. Correct, correct. Councilman Garcia. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a, a motion to add CSX to this uh, resolution. So moved. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Orange to add CSX ra uh, Railroad to Resolution 19-0003. Any questions on the motion? Councilwoman I would also Orange. like to see, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I would also like to see uh, this letter go to uh, Representative Harris and Senator Randolph. I mean, they should be fighting for our, on our behalf for this. This has been going on for quite some time, and uh, they brought it to our attention again, and so they should also be included. The shoulders ordinance, I don't know as much they can do. The end of the session is in April, but whatever they could do to bring some type of light. Madam Clerk, can you add those two representatives as well? In uh, Mr. President, for, uh, so the record's clear with uh, Councilwoman, are you asking that that be part of the amendment? Well, I think if we just send them a clerk copy direct, of this. That the clerk uh, direct a copy or just informally asking the clerk to no, send them a copy? I would like the clerk uh, officially to uh, send a copy to the, them. All right, then go ahead and, if you would, please include it in the amendment that the clerk be directed to do that, and that language will be, will be changed. Okay, so I'm including in the amendment uh, a letter be sent to uh, Representative Harris and Senator Randolph. Biskowski. And uh, also... Uh, Congressman Viskowski, that helps okay. Thank you, Councilman. <coughs> Any other questions? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Walter? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? 
Yes. Medina? Yes. Perez? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Resolution passes. Madam Clerk, next resolution, please. Mr. President, members of council, the record uh, in the minute should reflect that the resolution has passed. Yes. Amended. Very good. Madam Clerk, next resolution, please. Uh, we did. Uh, yes. yes. <clears throat> resolution 19-0004, a resolution of the East Chicago Common Council opposing proposed fiscal <coughs> rate hike. Second, Mr. President. <clears throat> Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilman Garcia. Any discussion on the motion? Councilwoman Vasquez. Can we have um, Madam Clerk um, read it in its entirety? Chicago Common Council opposing proposed fiscal rate hike, where the North Indiana Service Company has recently proposed an electric rate increase of approximately 12% for its resident and small business customers to the Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission. Whereas the Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission is currently seeking public comments regarding the proposed rate hike, and whereas such an excessive increase of 12% will place additional financial burdens on municipal budgets, local businesses, and on residents, particularly low-income residents and those living on fixed income. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of East Chicago, Indiana, as follows that the City of East Chicago, Indiana, opposes the proposed 12% increase to NIPSCO rates. The clerk is directed to forward a copy of this ordinance to the Indiana Office of Utility Consumer Counselor via email <coughs> or by mail at Consumer Service Staff, Indiana Office of Utility Consumer Counselor, 115 West Washington Street, Suite 1500 South Indianapolis, Indiana. Councilwoman Orange. Uh, as I said before, I got this late from the clerk uh, in Michigan City and also from Councilman Torres and Hammond was asking if we would pass something saying that we would uh, against the rate hike. The irony of it all, me and uh, Councilman Garcia was discussing earlier, the irony of it all is that they plan on lowering the rate for uh, big businesses and raising the rate for the average citizen, which I think is ridiculous as everybody knows NIPSCO is already high enough. Uh, I work with it every day through the energy assistance program. So many people have been shut off. It is unbelievable. And during that vortex, even though they said they don't shut people off if it's <coughs> under zero, people were coming in that NIPSCO services have been shut off the day before they knew the vortex was coming, and which is just ridiculous the way they have done things. And uh, I just don't think that they need any money. And from what I was uh was told by the clerk's office in uh, Michigan City is that they plan on putting language in that they don't have to keep coming back and asking for a raise. They want the periodic raises every so often. And that, that's just ridiculous for people that have to choose between paying their NIPSCO and buying their medicine. Councilman Garcia. Mr. President, yeah. Um, yeah, it is is a failure, I think, on legislation to allow this to happen. Um, they regulate uh, NIPSCO in the city. Uh, for for industry to go down is a shame. Here you got Mattel, your big businesses, uh, international business, all their rates are going down. All these industrial rates are going down and residential is going up, which uh, it shouldn't be allowed. Uh, I just ask that we all put our name on this um, resolution so it could show that it passed by a 9-0. to zero. But, uh, Madam Clerk, can you add my name to the this resolution, please. Councilwoman Orange. Um, Councilman Garcia, it is a, a line, signature line. You can mm -hmm. be added at the top. It is a signature line for all of us to mm -hmm. sign, so they know that we did. Any other? Councilwoman Vasquez. I also just want to make the comment that I am also not in favor of this because I, on a personal basis, um, work with families in the district and um, there is such a need, um, you know, with uh, either the spouse or the husband, either one losing their jobs, income is not the same, fixed income just like it states, 
But I want to ask um, Attorney Buscemi a, a resolution, a passing resolution like supporting this. What effect would it really have when it goes before the regulatory commission? You're, you're, well, if you pass this resolution, it will be an official part of the record of the Indian Utility Regulatory Commission. It's required by law to consider the position of the East Chicago City Council. It doesn't mean that they're obligated to turn the rate increase down, but they must consider the position of the Common Council. So passing the resolution is the right thing to do. The council members may know that uh, right at this time, at uh, 6 p.m. this evening, the Utility Regulatory Commission is conducting the field hearing in Lake County here at Hammond High School on this particular matter. So your action tonight is timely. And this will go into their official records and will be taken to the council. Any other discussion? Councilman Garcia? Yes, is that the last meeting, public meeting they have? I don't know what other public uh, field hearings they're conducting, but this is our Lake County hearing okay. uh, for our area of people and residents and organizations. I'm sure that uh, uh, municipalities and uh, consumers will be well represented there. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Medina? Yes. Red? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Yes. Resolution 19-0004 <laughs> passes. Do we have any old business? Moving on to new business, we do have Reverend Wade here. I did uh, say he could have a few minutes. At the podium, Reverend. <coughs> uh, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. President. And to all of the council members, we are delighted to be here. And thank you for this time of opportunity to come and to share with the council. Let me uh, state my name. I'm Reverend J.C. Wade, Jr., retired pastor of the Zion Baptist Church of East Chicago. And now our present pastor is the Reverend Dr. Charles L. Thompson, Jr. I'm happy to share with this uh, ministry, J.E. Wade Ministries, uh, with, uh, I have uh, Bishop uh, Norman Harrison with me. I have Bishop Grant. Apostle Kelly Williams and myself, along with some of the members of the panel, the, the, the uh, district uh, uh, council, were part of what we do. Four years ago, our son passed away. And in passing away, uh, it became a tremendous amount of grief. <clears throat> and my wife and I, as we struggled with recovery, uh, we began to share with others about our grief ministry. And they said to us, why don't you make this a part of what you do? And we began to share in that uh, two years ago, three years ago, I'm sorry, uh, we met at the Zion Baptist Church with about 15 people and began to share about our ministry. It began to grow. And three years later now, we have our third grief annual conference. And I want you to know that this is a nonprofit organization founded to place emphasis on grief and family support. The organization was established out of a sudden death of our son, and it is a part of the grief relief for every family. <laughs> Here's our purpose. Our purpose is to assist and support individuals and families suffering from loss, health, homes, employment, possessions. In suing doing so, we recognize that signs and symptoms of grief identify in stages and offer authenticate successful recovery. In addition, we provide a counsel to those who battle regret, anger, guilt, sorrow, and disappointments. And our mission is to give guidance from a biblical perspective. Uh, we began to do some research, and we've discovered that grief is real. It's not a figment of the imagination. Grief is real. And we did some study, and my wife and I have six certificates that we've done some extensive study in grief and how to deal with people in their struggle. We made a discovery that affects East Chicago. And one is the leading 
cause of infant mortality in the state of Indiana is right here, East Chicago. East Chicago is the leading part of our state for infant mortality. One of the leading causes of death among pastors and police is suicide. Building suicide among our children is 16.3%. We found out that in these statistics that 50% of the people living in East Chicago and Gary suffer from high blood pressure. 3.7% of the people who are seniors think about suicide every day. 70,000 people die every day from drug overdose. We can never get to the future by staying in the past. We must focus now in East Chicago on how to help people in their struggle. And this is why I'm here today. I know you received a recommendation or request about an ad for our grief ministry, which will be on the 5th and the 6th of this year. Our music will be held at the Zion Church in Chicago. And then on the 6th, we will have a, a conference at the Gary Community Center, I mean the Genesis Center in Gary, Indiana, and we need your help. Uh, you sent an ad which concluded all of you together. We need individual participation. That's what we need. We need individual participation. We need to be able to come to the council and sit down and work out how it is that the council can work on a collaborative effort, a collaborative effort to work with this ministry to help our struggling people. People are struggling with grief every day. We see it every day. My wife and I, it's too large for just two of us. We need your help, we need your support, and we need to work out how we can find finance and funding to be able to partner with the different agencies that are dealing with grief in our community, in our area. So this is why I'm here tonight, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to share. If you have any questions or comments, I'm here to answer as much, the best I can. Right now, we're getting ready for our conference. Uh, again, I want to remind you, it's in East Chicago, the musical. Music is a universal language. It blesses everyone. And then the conference at the, at the uh, uh, Gary uh, Center, the convention center in Gary, Indiana, on the 6th. We'll start at 8.30 in the morning throughout the day. We'll have classes. We have classes for children. We have classes for teens. We have classes for adults. We have class for ministers, and we have class for families. We want to be able to bless this community because people every day, every day, not some days, every day, someone is struggling with grief. Thank you, Reverend. If any of my colleagues have questions for Reverend Wade, we can uh, talk to him after the meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Have any other new business? Moving on to public expression, if you could please keep your comments to three minutes. We do have one, Miss Maritza Lopez. Good evening, Council. Uh, you each received a packet. I stand before you as a resident of the USS Red Superfund site and also as the chair of the East Chicago County Med Coalition, uh, which is the CAG, of the Superfund site. Um, we put pressure on EPA to make sure they protect us. And this is highly important. We want to call your attention to the ongoing environmental injustice that's happening in the Superfund site here in East Chicago. As you likely know, uh, US EPA is currently accepting public comments and its proposed remediation plan in the West Calumet Housing Complex, Zone 1, on the U.S. lead site, um, which is actually due this Wednesday by midnight. You can do that online. As of now, we have done a campaign with our state legislators. Northwest Indiana Legislative Caucus have come on board to support not only us, the mayor, uh, for Plan 4D, uh, the the experts we have had, because Plan 4D is the most protective plan protecting us, the residents, in the cleanup plan, not Plan 4B, as EPA wants. They only want to remove 24 inches, leaving part of a lead refinery buried there, underground. They're not touching the groundwater. They are leaving full contaminants there. 
Uh, they're not even touching part of Kerry Gosh that's contaminated. They're not even paying attention to the Americo report, which Americo, before they demolished, said that needs additional testing, and they found severe contamination. So they're bypassing all of that. So we are, I come before you, you have in your packets the letter from the mayor, the comment that he submitted to EPA, um, a breakdown from us, which is done by Northwestern University, which is our attorneys, which is a research and environmental school. They study that for us. They break it down in simple terms. Our st federal legislators also signed on on our behalf. We got Todd Young. We got Pete Wisklowski. So you're the only body that has not signed on. We're asking you to please support, along as our Northwest Indiana Caucus, to also contact Governor Holcomb, Item, and EPA submit your comment as a complete body, as they have done. You have in your packets the information. Uh, the president of the council should have the email contacts, and I gave it to the attorneys and their uh, so they could email it immediately, so they receive it by midnight. Um, I also want you to know that... 30 seconds, ma'am. Okay. The comments from February 13th came out. Karen Freeman wants Plan 4B. The airport wants Plan 4B. They have a plan for over here. And also, along with that, the responsible parties, they want Plan 4A and the contractors themselves want Plan 4B. So keep that in mind. We need to protect ourselves and our own community. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> have a motion to adjourn, please. So, so moved. Second. second. Motion was made by Councilman Medina, seconded by Councilman Garcia. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Walter? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Garcia? Yes. <clears throat> Yes. 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 Good night. <laughs>